Hello people and welcome to The Witch in the Woods and today I'm going to talk about Halloween or Samhain as it's called. So we're coming up to Halloween when the ghosts and ghoulies are out walking abroad and as you know um, Samhain actually is the Irish for the month of November and it means summer's end. So what we're actually celebrating here is the turn of the season and the death of the old year and the birth of the new year. Now before I go on I'm sorry that this video is a little bit hurried, in fact everything in my life is a little bit hectic at the moment and it probably will get very hectic around about Christmas. Um, so I will try and make some videos but I couldn't put the time into this video that I would have liked and I hope that I can get it out on time but it's going to be a bit touch and go. So um, please forgive me, I will try to continue to make videos, that's my cat. He's going to be very noisy, he's sleeping in the basket. That's it, good boy. Sorry about that. So I'll continue to try and make some videos as much as I can. Um, and just put out perhaps shorter little videos. Um, I couldn't really go and make the B-roll that I was hoping to make. So I'll try to put together what I can, just to explore some ideas of how to celebrate Samhain. So the thing about Samhain is that it's a good time to cleanse your life. In fact, it was very traditional to sweep out the embers of your fire. Um, and in the days when fires were burning perpetually, it would be quite notable to put your fire out and to clear away all the old dust and ashes and to start again with a fresh ear and a fresh flame. Well, the 
And the flame would symbolise your life force and your vitality. And so symbolically you were clearing away all the old chaff that you didn't want and bringing in new stuff for the year ahead. It's also um, a very good time to do shadow work and to explore the darker aspects of life that you may not want to face particularly. Now I think there's some misunderstanding around what shadow work involves. Um, it comes from the sayings of such as everybody you meet is your mirror and you have to explore all your own, own faults and all your own dark places. Whereas I think this is spiritual bypassing just as much as saying everything is love and light is spiritual bypassing. <laughs> yourself every fault in the outer world. That's not to say that we don't have something to learn from looking at ourselves and seeing exactly what we're hiding from ourselves, what actions we're taking that we may not approve of if they were in other people. But also don't carry the burden of being excessively hard on yourself, of giving yourself the blame for every situation. Um, this is as bad as saying um, everything is perfect, there's nothing but love, fear is, you know, a very bad path. Fear is your friend, anger is your friend, and these things should be owned. If you see somebody who is angering you, then yes, perhaps that's showing you some aspect of your life that you need to work on in yourself. But I don't think it's as easy as saying that everybody you meet is your mirror. There are aspects in other people that you may have the opposite to. This is why you may be attracting certain situations. So don't take the burden and blame for everything. It may be that you are too much of a people pleaser and therefore you're uh, attracting people who don't respect your boundaries. So it doesn't mean that you are overstepping other people's boundaries. Um, it actually means that you need to look at where you need to put your boundaries higher. And so there's some misunderstanding in trying to be spiritual, trying to look at your shadow. That can lead you astray. So when we do shadow work, I think it's best to try and get in touch with our real inner pain, our real inner issues. Um, and we can't always see them, and this is where spell work comes in quite well. And so Samhain is a very good time to do this. Um, and one particular way of doing this may be to put out a bowl of water in the moonlight and um, ask it to catch all those painful situations that you cannot face and that you haven't been able to see in yourself. And then leave it out in the moonlight, if you can, just under a waning moon, just as the moon is turning, for a few hours, but don't allow the sunlight to strike the water. Uh, then take the moon water in and it's a very good idea to pour that away, either into a river or into a stream, or at the foot of a tree, and ask that these situations be brought to light, be brought to consciousness, 
and be healed. Another way you can do this is looking into a crystal ball or water gazing. And if you can do this with a slightly waning moon and a black candle in with the idea of banishing all those things that are blocks in your life that you cannot see, then this is a very good time to do this as the tide is turning towards the winter and banishing all of that dark stuff. So that would be one of the things I would suggest for Samhain. Um, another thing that Samhain is associated with is the Feast of the Dead. So a feast for the ancestors. And most notably at this time of year, although in America it's uh, very symbolic to use the pumpkin, actually in the Celtic lands the fruit of the dead was the apple. And so I would suggest um, using the apple to make some food, such as an apple pie or um, baked apples or toffee apples. Um, and if you can, share a portion of this food, put it out, put it on the hearth, put it outside the door. And this is an offering to the ancestors to appease them and to feed them. Um, as they return to the earth and the veils are thin at this time. Samhain is also a very good time to perform divination and to try and make predictions for the year ahead. So um, you can use this in many ways. You could scry into a crystal ball or into a black mirror. Um, in the olden days they would stare into the bonfires Sowing was a time to build bonfires on hills. They would also probably divine by the firelight, and by staring into the fire, they would seek messages. Um, of course, these days it's much more traditional to use tarot cards or oracle cards of some sort. And so I thought what would be fun would be to try a small reading for the year ahead. So I've got a very old and beloved set of the Druid Oracle by Philip Cargon. And uh, these are beautiful, but as you can see they're a little battered and dirty by now. They've been travelling with me many days, many many places. Um, and so I'm just going to do a little bit of work on tarot reading. I'm sure I feel like I've not shuffled that enough. So when you're working with tarot you've got to be very instinctive. What you're doing really is breaking up the stagnant energy and your own energy in there and it's your energy that you're reading because in many ways you are the well of knowledge, you have the intuition and all you have to do is access that and tap into it. Um, and then of course there is some outside influence as well, I'm not saying it's purely you, you are asking answers from the divine but you are definitely the wellspring, which is why um, the seers of old were very renowned. So anyway, less blether. I'm just going to ask for some guidance for 2020. It's been quite hard so far. So if there's anything to be read for Samhain, for us all, Justice is the first card that I'm receiving. So seeking justice, there will be justice served is what I'm feeling. 
I'll show you the lovely cards. And I just look into these and let them speak to me. I don't know how other people do it, but uh, I hear what they have to say. So here are the two, the scales of mercy and the sword is severity. And these are the two sides of justice, be acting between mercy or acting between severity. And I'm saying that people are seeing too much of this severity and there is going to be a call for mercy to balance the scales here. That it's going to be a call to end the restrictions, perhaps riots, perhaps protests. People are going to erupt and ask for more mercy. It's a very difficult situation we've been through. Um, and I'm seeing this a little in the elections in America. I know that's in the forefront of my mind as well because somebody mentioned that on a YouTube video. So even though I don't really follow American politics much, um, there's going to be a kinder, more sociable desire to come in. That was badly said, but you know what I mean? Um, so there's going to be a seeking of justice to balance the scales um, and to use wisdom now instead of severity. Um, and it's going to be a feminine energy. I'm looking at the owl here. Um, and a calling on a much more empathetic and wiser course. Is there any more to say on that? She's saying there will be blows, but mercy will, will win outright at the end. People are going to hold the government to account. They're going to ask them to balance that scale. Um, the weight is here, the power is here. And we need to put some other weight on the other scale, on the other balance. I'm going to leave that there. Just do a quick three card reading. The Nine of Wands, wounds. A sense of being wounded, a sense of being in isolation. Um, and a desire to heal now from the illness, from the, um, yeah, the sickness that is overrunning this planet in many ways. The feeling of lack of strength, but there's a fire on the horizon here. There is a glow of hope coming in and a brighter day. So this card means sickness, but it also means healing and um, coming to terms with the wounding and moving on towards healing. And the full new beginnings. So what can I... I Immediately I'm getting something about spring, stepping off into the future around about spring, opening the doors and, and coming out into the world again. Um, and also stepping off into the unknown. So there's a sense that we don't really know which direction we're taking, but the doors are open the way is clear and we're stepping out into the future and this is very related to Covid all of this so far um, so I think the issue will start to resolve around springtime um, it's going to be a hard winter but the doors and the fresh air will open April April is the month of the fool, isn't it? 
So we'll see if that's correct. And just because I like to do an underlying fourth card, the issue underneath it all is Three of Pentacles. That's a very strange one. So this is apprenticeship. This is learning a craft. This is learning our work. Um, work, creativity, skills, a desire to learn new skills, a desire to work in new directions and lay the foundations for craftsmanship in some way to be more creatively involved or artistically involved in something. But this involves work, it in, involves learning off other people, it involves making mistakes and practicing. It's not, um, this person is not a craftsman yet, they're just learning their trade. Um, but a desire to create magic and creativity are very much linked. So to put your heart into something, to put your soul into something to put your passion out there in the world. Um, so, yeah, the arts have been very, um, have suffered a lot uh, under these COVID measures. A lot of people who are artists, musicians, self-employed, um, they've suffered a lot and there's gonna be some concessions I think towards those businesses and towards those careers. Um, yeah, so we're going to continue the wounding. There's going to be some unrest. The doors will finally open and we will be free. And when we free, we want to build then on new work. We want to rebuild what we may have lost. And just finally, a little word on oracles. What I have here is a card deck. It's very rough. These are just thumbnails. And um, what I wanted to say about um, making predictions and using oracles is I would totally recommend working with your own symbolism as much as you can create a symbolism of your own and creating your own kind of cards so these are my cards look at those i mean they don't have to be fancy and they don't have to be full of frills but each card means something to me each card has a significance and I've obviously doodled these and not spent much time, but they teach me their wisdom. So I'm going to pick, I'm not sure how many of these cards, but for the year ahead, I think I'll just pick one. Or maybe I'll pick three very quickly. So from my cards, let's see. Half fire of the imagination. Um, I'll show you that card. I'm sure you can see that in the light there. Um, so the half fire of the imagination. This is the wisdom of the child. It's the imagination of the child. This is fed by an understanding that we are all interconnected and we are all part of nature. This is where we get feed our fire. Be as a child, was the saying. <clears throat> Going within to believe and dream before you create, to listen to what your dreams are telling you. Um, to listen to what the earth has to tell us as well at this time. 
she's quite wounded, she needs healing, she needs nurturance. Um, and she's calling for us to stop the destruction, the fires, the things are getting out of hand, the raping of the forests. But it doesn't have to be a negative thing, it's also very warming in the heart, it's wakening the heart again. Um, and you do this through spending time in nature, listening to the Fae. People say, be scared of the Fae. Don't be scared. I don't believe you have to be scared of the Fae. I don't believe that you have to be frightened and worried of listening to them. If you find a beautiful place in nature and you sit there, um, the energy you feel around you it's not negative and it's not oppressive and it's not fearful. That is, that is, uh, it, you can soak that in, that beautiful energy of those fairies in that place. And so this is what this card is about, really. Seeing with your third eye, it's being one with the nature spirits, being like a child in imagination. And allowing that to feed your soul and allowing that to bring healing. So, um, that's my first card. Quickly, I will do a second card. Uh -huh. Here is my Elven. It's called the Wondrous Circle of Stones. And this was my Elven King that I found at Kilmartin. I don't know if you watched my last video. <clears throat> But these are one of the many pictures I drew. I've tried to get this guy, but I couldn't. My artistic skills are not worthy of it. But, um, yeah. The power of the ancestors, seeking help from the ancestors. The ancestors will try and speak to us at this time. It's up to us to try and tap in to what they want to know. And the ancestors, the very deep ancestors, have lived in a world that is beyond our world it's a much more natural world we are very much confused by our civilized society and so it's about um the energy of the earth the dragon paths the sacred sites the stone circles the power of of whatever our ancestors were doing in that is our natural birthright that is the people that we are um, and we're too confused with our technological world really we don't really have the access to the wisdom that they had um, It's a feeling that when we die we become part of the earth, our ancestors are the earth, the bones of our ancestors are in the earth, the earth itself is made up of bones, of animals, of, you know, everything. We are walking on the bones of ancestors, literally. And, um, right, and beneath us we have coal. We have millions and million year old trees, you know, and we're definitely dwelling on the bones of our ancestors. So, oh, she's hissy. Oi, no need, no need. One pin. She's my semi feral cat, aren't you? She's not quite humanised yet. Be softer, you. Okay. Anyway, sorry. Um, yes, so seeking the wisdom of the ancestors, looking into the darkness, entering the womb tomb of the mother. Um, sit in silence. I would sit in darkness and meditate. Um, try to get in touch with that darkness, the stillness and the silence, where the wisdom comes from. I mean, there's many things to this card and I can't really, it's frustrating that I can't really relate to them all because 
I'm a little bit nervous about reading my own cards. <clears throat> but I will just leave it there. Move on quickly. Terrible drawing. The untold wealth of the gnomes. Now, this card is about working hard in the dark and in the dirt and in the sweat and the tears to create the wealth of existence. Nothing comes easily if you want to access the gems, the diamonds, the gold of existence. You've got to dig in the dirt. You've got to get your hammer out and dig and sweat and get dirty. Um, but it's also about physicality being something to celebrate, being um, enjoying your physicality, seeing it as the wealth is, enjoy good food, enjoy wine, enjoy humour. I'm not encouraging anybody to drink themselves senseless or anything, but um, gnomes, they're bawdy, they love a good laugh, they like, like a party. Um, they enjoy the fruits of the earth. And it's saying if you work hard, then you will achieve some treasure that is personal to you, but you've got to put the work in. So it's a time of rebuilding and yeah, it's the similar to the apprentice cards. We've got to start from scratch again and we've got to build it up and we've got to seek the treasure of life because we've had it taken away a little over the last year. So um, in the darkness and in the dirt is where we build and where we seek to find the rubies and diamonds and jewels of existence. Um, okay, so pretty much the muchness, but as I say, if you can just work with your own symbolism, it can be anything. Make your own symbols, whatever they mean to you. These are mostly upside down. <laughs> Just a quick flick through. You understand the concept though. So there we go. So Samhain is a great time for doing divination and I would say it would be a great time to try and design your own cards. Write down your own symbols in whichever simple fashion depends on your own artistic skill, but just to make symbols as much as you can so that you can work with your own psyche and with your own keys. So Samhain is a very good time to make wishes too. If you want, you could make nine wishes of what you wish to achieve in the year ahead. And if you write each one on a piece of paper, you could burn them in the Samhain fire. Or maybe you want to burn them in a bonfire on bonfire night, which we have in Britain. Or you could burn them in a candle. But just remember that the whole of November is the time of Samhain. And what we're really talking about when we talk about Halloween is the eve of Samhain, is the day before Samhain begins. And so it's seen as a gateway, but it's it's all a month that is a magical month. So don't worry too much if you want to delay it until you can go and find a fire. Um, also, it would once upon a time have been celebrated on a full moon. And this year Samhain actually falls on a full moon. So I think this year will be a particularly powerful time to make wishes or to work with the energies of Samhain. Um, it may actually be a little bit odd 
um, because of the coinciding of the full moon, the spirits abroad and uh, the fact that everybody will be celebrating on the full moon on the same day. So I think that's a particularly good omen myself. Um, and uh, I, I probably won't be celebrating as much as I would like um, but uh, this is why I will be celebrating a little bit early so there's always time around the gates of the year as well if you don't quite manage to catch it on the day so anyway I wish you a blessed Samhain and um, please tell me what you plan to do if you've got any ideas of any other ways to celebrate and I'm sorry but I filmed the whole of this video without turning on my jack-o'-lantern who is um, quite spectacular this year I'm afraid they've sold out of pumpkins so I'm quite glad that I have my unfortunately plastic tacky one to fill back on but um, he's cool and he will do so anyway Thank you for listening and I hope to speak to you all again soon. Thanks, bye.